Crate or kennel training your dog is so important, not only for your dog to have a safe, nice space in your home, but one day you might need to have your dog crate or kennel trained when you're traveling, whether it be by plane, car, train, whatever. This process is gonna take several months to do correctly and completely, but let's go over the actual steps of what crate training or kennel training is. And make sure you stay till the end because I'll give you guys some tips for success with crate training. Let's start by clarifying that crate training or kennel training is never a negative thing and it's all about mindset for you and your dog. You want to associate this crate or kennel here with only positive things like treats and rest and peace and safe space, everything positive. Don't use the crate as somewhere where you send your dog when they're in trouble as a punishment, rather only use it as a place for them to rest. By the way, Mochi is not crate or kennel trained, so all the clips you'll be seeing is of Mochi new to this whole process as well. The first thing you need to do is choose the right crate or kennel for you. For us, um, I'm kennel training Mochi because we're going to be moving by plane sometime in the next two years. So we got this kennel here, it's called the Carly nomad aircraft box and it complies with all the airline requirements if it's not for flying or anything you can get any crate you want whichever one looks the comfiest and the best for you once you've got the right crate or kennel put something in the bottom that is really comfortable for us we're using this blanket that mochi always sleeps on anyway to use something with a familiar smell before i get into the actual steps which i'm getting to um, i just want to say that this can be done in anywhere from a few days a couple days to a few months for example, if you got a new puppy and you want to get started with crate training from day one where they have to sleep in there at night, you can do this very quickly. The only downside of that is that you might have some negative emotions attached to the crate at first, but of course they can go away really easily with some more training. But if you're going to be training a dog like Mochi, who we're not in a rush with to train and we only want to create positive associations with, we're going to be going very, very slowly and stretching this process out over the course of multiple weeks. When you first present a crate or kennel to your dog, he's most likely going to be very fearful, but also very curious. So this is the perfect chance to start building his initial positive associations. First off, leave the crate or kennel in the middle of a room and let them investigate without any interruptions. Give him a few feet of space and silence to sniff, even go in if he wants to, you know, leave the door wide open. We didn't even attach the door yet. Um, so if you want to do that, that's totally fine. And let him just do his own thing. Whether this is um, a few seconds of your dog just sniffing around, or if you want, you can even leave the crate out in the middle of the room again for multiple days and just let your dog get to know the crate on his own time. But again, it's all based on your timeline. A few minutes is fine as well. When your dog seems to be ready to get to know the crate a little bit more, Pour some treats outside of the crate, but very close to the crate to encourage him to get close, eat some treats and start building that positive feeling. Let your dog eat those. And then after you do that for a few rounds, throw some treats into the very entrance of the crate here so that he can still get them without having to go in. Again, repeat that for a few times. Just get him used to, you know, getting some treats from the front, the side, all over the crate. Um, and we're just, again, continuing to build that positive feeling with the crate or kennel. After you do that a few times over again, the course of one day, two days, two weeks, whatever, we want to start encouraging them to get a little bit further into the crate. To do this, toss a few treats into the middle to the back of the crate and let your dog go in and get them. Give them some space to do this. You don't want to be like hovering over them because they might get scared. So toss in some few treats, back off a little and get let them get them. Um, do not close the door on them yet. We still want to create a very open, optional feeling with the crate. We don't want them to feel trapped. We don't want them to be forced to go in. Let them go in, get the treats, and come right back out. Do that multiple times to get them going in and out. I'm doing this with Mochi every single day, a few times a day. I just toss some treats in the back and go about my day, let him go in and out. It's just getting him used to the motion of coming in and out without feeling trapped. The thing with Mochi is he's so, he's a pretty fearful dog, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there can relate to this. So he's very like timid and very doesn't want to go in um, with all four paws and that's totally fine. That's why we're taking this process so slow. So yeah, every time you do this, you're just building more confidence in them and more positive association. Do that step multiple times and you can even do it with toys. When you're playing fetch or something inside with your dog, throw their toy into the crate, let them go get it, come right back out. Again, making the crate a fun space, not a negative space. Finally, when you feel like your dog has created enough of a positive association with the crate and you feel like they're ready, we can close the door on them. Encourage them into the crate and give them something like a stuffed Kong toy. You know, stuff a Kong with some peanut butter, put it in the freezer for a few hours, then give it to them when they're in the crate. 
by doing this it's kind of like two things one is obviously you're creating positive association your dog is thinking oh i get to go in the crate with the door closed that means i get this delicious stuffed frozen kong but on the second part it's almost like a pacifier for babies when you put them in the crate with a kong they have no chance to be whimpering barking uh, and having all these negative experiences. When they finish the Kong, they'll immediately open the door and let them out for the first few times because again, um, we want to start small. As you can see in this clip, I actually taped a licky mat with frozen peanut butter to the back of the wall. Um, again, I don't have a door, but I wanted it to be all the way in the back so Mochi has to go in with all four paws and he was forced to eat the whole licky mat, licking it off the back wall. So he had to stay in the crate the whole time even though I don't have a door and that was really great. Um, for creating a simulation of what it would be like when he has to be in the crate for a longer period of time. That's pretty much all the steps of crate training laid out from introduction to getting used to it to actually using it. But I do have some important tips I wanna share for success with crate training. The first tip is to never, ever, 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 ever leave your collar or harness on your dog um, while they're in the crate. Not only does removing a collar or harness um, help with the feeling of this being a restful space for like the night or for a nap, but it also is really, really dangerous because a lot of times a dog's collar or harness can get caught in these little nooks and crannies within the crate and that could actually lead to your dog getting choked and even worse, so we obviously don't want that. Another tip is, like I said, go as slow as you possibly can and that way you can create only positive feelings with this crate. It is going to take several weeks before for a dog that's going you know at a slow pace to opt to go into the crate for like a night of sleep but it's going to be 100% worth it because they are going to do it eventually and that's going to be the best feeling in the world because you know your dog is choosing to go in there and he's not being forced to sleep in there or anything like that finally my tip is to set super small goals for your dog and then grow from there for example the first time you're going to be closing the door on your dog in the crate don't leave for four hours for like a night out with your friends. Instead, a good idea could be like um, putting your dog in the crate with the door closed with a frozen Kong or two, and then maybe vacuuming your house for 10 or 15 minutes and then come back, let them out. So you start small. Your dog doesn't think, oh my God, when I'm in here, I have to be stuck in here for like five hours. Start small, work your way up, and then eventually your dog should be able to stay in there for a few hours, no problem, and actually feel very safe. By going slow, you're building confidence in your dog and you're just making this whole process much easier and enjoyable for them. Eventually, you can even add a command for your dog to go into the kennel. For that, check out this video linked here on the screen for place.